last lab video of the year. Um, so this one's over electrochemical cells, and you guys have already done this lab, so I don't really need to go through a lot of this introductory stuff. I think you understand probably what's going on. Um, I, don't know, I guess I might mention this. I've seen this notation once or twice. Uh oh, sorry. I've seen this notation once or twice. Um, you're probably not going to see it on the AP exam, but you know, just in case. So the uh, when they write the cell that way, what it says is that the anode is on the left. Okay, so that's going to be the zinc here. The cathode is going to be on the right. That's just the standard way of writing it. And then this this little line right here and right here represents a phase boundary, and all that means is it's the separation between the solid zinc and the zinc two plus, and the separation between the solid copper and the copper two plus. Okay, so that basically it's the difference between the solid and the solution that the solid is dipped in. Um, the double line here in the middle represents the salt bridge that connects the two. So anyway, you can take a look at that if you want to. Um, everything else on here, the Nernst equation is important, and they give you several different variations of that. I think my preferred one is probably the bottom one here, um, assuming that we're at 25 degrees Celsius, which you know, we're going to be pretty close to that. So. Um, That's that, I guess. So once we get to the pre-lab questions, it says the following data were measured using a nickel electrode as the reference standard. So if we're using nickel as the reference, um, in the lab itself, they had you use zinc as the reference. And on your standard reduction potential chart, it has you use hydrogen as the reference. Or it uses hydrogen as the reference, I guess. All right, so these numbers are not going to match what's on your reduction potential chart, because that one's measured with hydrogen being 0. Uh, this one, the nickel is zero. Okay, so then this is still fairly easy to answer. The ion that's most easily reduced is going to be the one uh, that has the highest reduction potential. Okay, when compared to the um, now, these are all notice. These are all written as reductions because the electrons are on the um, on the reactant side on all of these. So all of these are written as though they're gaining electrons. Okay, so the voltages here. Um, the one with the highest voltage, the highest reduction potential, is copper. So that's the one that's the most easily reduced. And then the one that's most easily oxidized, obviously, then would be aluminum because it's on the other end. Um, that's the one that has the lowest reduction potential. All right, so copper and aluminum electrodes are connected to form a battery. So the two that we just talked about, those are the ones that are connected, which is the anode. Um, I'm just going to basically run you through this because uh, in order to write the, now I'll let you uh, calculate the battery voltage because I think you guys can do that. We've done that plenty of times in class. But as far as identifying which is the anode and which is oxidized, that's actually the same question because remember, an ox, right? So anode goes with oxidation and then red cat reduction goes with cathode. Um, Sorry, I distracted myself. So which is the anode? Um, it's going to be the one that's the most likely to be oxidized, which we already talked about this. The aluminum is most easily oxidized. We talked about that in step two. So the aluminum is the one at the anode, also the one getting oxidized. Now the battery voltage, you're just going to have to remember your equation here, E0 for the cell, which is basically that's what they're asking when they ask for the battery voltage. Um, it's E0 reduction. Uh, for the cathode, minus the reduction potential of the anode. Okay, so you can take both of those then, and you can figure out um, what the voltage of the cell is going to be. Just remember, we just identified the anode as aluminum. That makes copper the cathode. Okay, so that should be fairly easy. Writing a balanced net ionic equation for the reaction that takes place. So we said aluminum is the one getting oxidized. So the oxidation reduction there would be solid aluminum going to aluminum 3 plus plus 3 electrons. Okay. And the reason I knew that is because this is the reduction reaction for aluminum. So we've got to flip that, write it in the opposite direction for the oxidation. Um, the copper is the one getting reduced, so we can just write that as it is up here. So copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons. So it's copper solid. Okay, add those two together. 
Um, now the trick here is when you add them together, the number of electrons has to be equal in your oxidation and your reduction, right? So they're not equal at the moment. In order to get them equal, we probably need to multiply this whole reaction by 2 and this one by 3. Okay, so once you do that, you should be able to add these together and you'll have balanced uh, a balanced redox, redox reaction there. Okay, so that's A through D on number 3. Number four is where it gets tricky. So they're asking you, they're telling you about a solution that's prepared where a small amount of Fe2 plus is added to a much larger amount of a solution where the OH minus, and they're giving you the OH minus concentration. And they say that some of the FeOH2 precipitates. And then they're giving you the KSP, which we haven't talked about that in a little while. So we're going to have to pull that out of our memory bank. Um, but ultimately, this first question here, this first part of four, is actually an equilibrium, solubility equilibrium question. Okay, So if the KSP is 8.0 times 10 to the negative 10th, we should probably go ahead and write the equation for this reaction first before we write our equilibrium expression. This is going to be FeOH2 solid in equilibrium with Fe2 plus plus 2OH minus. Okay. So you have to be careful here, the stoichiometry is not one-to-one. -one. So when we write our K expression for this one, the KSP is going to be equal to the concentration of the Fe2 plus times the concentration of the OH minus squared. Okay. So what they're asking for in A, they're saying assuming the hydroxide ion concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative second, calculate the concentration of the Fe2 plus ions. Well, they already gave us the KSP. Oh, better hurry. Um, they already gave us the KSP here. All right, so we have to just uh, calculate the OH minus, or, or use the OH minus that they give us, and then calculate the Fe2 plus. All right, so I'm going to divide both sides here by the OH minus. Um, so when I plug that in, I'm just going to write over this writing here. So we've got 8.0 times 10 to the negative 10th is equal to the Fe2 plus concentration times uh, 1.0 times 10 to the negative second, but that's squared, okay? So this one you can probably do in your head, uh, 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth once you square it. So we're dividing both sides by 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth. which is then going to give us an Fe2 plus concentration of 8.0 times 10 to the negative 6th. Okay, so there's our Fe2 plus concentration. Now part B here, I'm going to have to erase a bunch of this stuff, but remember that number. Part B is saying that we are now making a battery using that above solution um, and also the other half cell is going to be a standard nickel electrode. So we want to write the balance in that ionic equation for that cell reaction. All right, so we got to come back up here, look at our cell potentials. Um, this one's going to be with uh, iron and nickel, okay? And notice the nickel is higher on that reduction potential chart than the iron is, okay? So that means the iron's going to probably get oxidized here. The nickel's going to get reduced. So if we're writing the... Um, the balanced net ionic equation here, the nickel can be written as it is, because again, that's the one that's getting reduced here, it has a higher reduction potential. The iron we're going to have to flip, because that one's actually going to get oxidized in this reaction. So the solid iron yields Fe2 plus, plus two electrons. Okay. Now the nice thing about this one is two electrons on each side, so you end up with nickel two plus, plus iron solid yields nickel solid plus Fe2 plus. So there's your overall net ionic equation for that one. Uh, and then we're going to, it says to use the Nernst equation to calculate the potential of the above cell. All right, so the Nernst equation is, let me erase this now. Um, actually, I'm going to keep that because I kind of, I'm going to keep the overall. 
So the Nernst equation is E equals E0 minus 0 0.0592 over N times the log of Q. Okay, so we figured out the E0 here. Or no, did we? I guess we did not figure out the E0 yet, but that would that's very easy to figure out because the, the nickel is 0. Um, the Fe2 plus uh, cell is going to be negative 0.15. So when we take 0 minus negative 0.15, we take the cathode minus the anode, it's just 0.15. Okay, so, um, so we know that. minus 0 0.0592 divided by n. Now the number of electrons being transferred here also should be pretty easy. It's going from a 2 plus to a 0 oxidation state for the nickel, for the iron from a 0 to a 2 plus. So there are two moles of electrons being transferred here. That's what the n stands for, is moles of electrons, times the log of q. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because the log of q here Q in this particular reaction, remember, is it's like the equilibrium constant, except we're not necessarily at equilibrium. Um, so this is going to be Fe2 plus over the concentration of the nickel 2 plus. Because remember, the only thing that we write in our equilibrium expressions are aqueous. We don't include solids in our equilibrium expressions or in our Q expressions. All right, so we figured out the concentration of the Fe2 plus in the previous problem. That is, um, 8.0 times 10 to the negative 6, I believe. Okay, but the concentration of the nickel 2 plus it doesn't seem to give us that. Now here's the trick: it's a standard nickel electrode. If it's a standard nickel electrode, that means the concentration of the nickel is one, one molar. Okay, so that's kind of the trick on that one. Um, so then you plug all that in, you should be able to solve for E there, and that gives you your uh, potential. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense on the pre-lab. I'm going to let you calculate that number for yourself. Got to make you do something here. All right. So then we performed the experiment. You guys should have gotten data for um, parts 1 and 2. If you, if you got the data for part 3, then you can uh, you can do these calculations and I'll kind of walk you through how you would do that um, quickly because I don't think most people got to part three. Part one, all you're doing is you're making zinc the standard and so you're making your own reduction potential chart essentially is what you're doing there. Okay. Um, down here, you should have uh, chosen any anode and cathode that you wanted to. It didn't really matter which one. So let's say, for example, you chose the silver as the anode um, and the, uh, I don't know, the zinc is the cathode. It doesn't really matter. Um, now that's actually not going to work, okay? Um, because silver is typically going to be the cathode in pretty much all of these because it's so low on the uh, are so high, sorry, on the reduction potential chart that you have um, compared to most of the other metals. So actually, I should make this correct. Maybe we do like magnesium and silver, okay? Um, so you'd write the equation for the cell reaction, and the way you're going to do that is basically just um, for this example, the anode is the one that's getting oxidized. So that's the Mg going to Mg2+. plus. Okay, and then the silver, the cathode, that's the one that's getting uh, reduced. So that would start out as a plus, plus an electron yields Mg solid. Okay, uh, we're going to have to multiply the bottom one by two because there's only one electron being transferred there. So then you're going to end up with something that looks like this. Magnesium plus 2Ag plus yields Mg2 plus plus Ag. And, and we're going to have to put a 2 in front of the AG also because we multiplied that equation by 2. So that should balance everything out. Um, the magnesium is getting oxidized. The silver is getting reduced. That looks pretty good. Uh, you should have measured a potential for that. That's what you, whatever you got on the voltmeter uh, when you were doing the, the actual lab. Now, the predicted potential from your experimental data, you're going to come back up to your reduction potential chart that you made in the previous part. 
Okay, so this uh, you're going to look at your reduction potential here, your voltage for uh, zinc versus silver, and then zinc versus magnesium. Okay, um, and you subtract the cathode minus the anode, and that would be your predicted potential. Okay, so you're going to see how close that is to your actual measured potential at that point. So that's what you're doing for that part. Part two, you should have measured a voltage when the copper is at that, uh, this concentration right here, okay? Um, and so you should have measured a voltage there. You should have figured out what the anode and what the cathode are. And actually, it kind of tells you because they have the cell written, and they explained this earlier, you know, anode's written on the left, cathode's written on the right. And you also should know that just because of your reduction potential chart that you made, okay? So that part should be fairly easy. Now the equation for the cell reaction, again, you're going to write that exactly the same way as we did the magnesium silver example up there. Just remember that the zinc is going to zinc 2 plus, copper 2 plus is being uh, reduced to copper. Okay. Um, now again, the predicted potential for this one, a little bit different. Okay, so the measured potential, that's just going to be your voltage. These two are the same. Okay. The predicted potential, um, it's going to have to come from the Nernst equation. So E equals E0 um, minus 0 0.0592 over N times the log of Q. All right. Now our standard zinc cell is one molar here, and then we used a 0 0.0010 molar concentration of copper. Okay, so once you have your reaction written, and your reaction, I guess I'll go ahead and write this just so I can show this to you. Zinc plus copper 2 plus yields zinc 2 plus plus copper. Okay, so your Q on this one is just going to be the products over reactants. So the zinc 2 plus concentration over the copper 2 plus concentration. All right, so then you just plug in those concentrations for your Q. You should be able to find your E0 based on the um, the numbers that you got up above for your zinc and your copper cells. Actually, the zinc is going to be 0 because that's our standard here, right? So this should be pretty easy to calculate. Um, and then the N, the number of electrons here, hopefully you guys can figure out how many electrons are being transferred in this one. So you just plug all that in, that should give you your predicted potential right here. That's going to be your E. And then again, you see how close the Nernst equation is to giving you what you actually measured in the lab. Okay? Hopefully that all makes sense. I don't think that's too difficult. Um, part three. So on part three, um, you're going to figure out uh, basically the exact same thing you did on the last one, except uh, we don't know the concentration of the silver. Now, I forget how they told you to set that one up even because I'm not sure if anyone got there. Um, Ten milliliters of sodium chloride. Add one drop of one molar AgNO3 to the NaCl solution. And stir well. Okay. So we don't know our concentration here because we don't know our our KSP. So we're using this actually to find the KSP. Um. So then pour some of the solution into one of the wells in the well plate. And silver. Add a silver metal electrode. Which the potential difference between this half cell and the zinc half cell. I feel like I'm wasting a lot of time on something that you guys didn't necessarily even need to do. So, um, since you guys aren't uh, 
required to do that last part here. I'm going to give that a pass for now. Um, if you're curious about how to do it, I'm going to actually make the calculations here. Um, actually, it tells you, I think, part three, how to do this. It's telling you to write a balanced net ionic equation for the reaction and then use the Nernst equation to calculate the concentration of the Ag plus ion. Okay, so when you get to we get to that part in the post lab calculations. Let's see here. Which again, you guys don't have to do this. Um, so you've got the the measured voltage here. Okay, and that's going to be your E value. And we know the E zero for this reaction between the zinc and the silver. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. We know the zinc concentration because that's the standard, so then you're just figuring out the Ag plus uh, concentration. That's the only thing that you don't know in the equation. So, again, we're just using the Ernst equation here. I forgot that you could find the E0 on this one. Um, and the Q here is going to be um, the zinc 2 plus over the silver 1 plus squared, okay? So then the zinc is just a 1 molar because it's a standard. We know this, we know this, and we know how many electrons are being transferred, so then you can solve for the Ag plus here, okay? Then once you know the value of the Ag plus, um, because you know how your KSP works for this one, for AgCl, it's just the Ag plus concentration times the Cl minus concentration. So you can assume that your Ag plus concentration is also equal to your Cl minus concentration. Um, okay, let me read through this again because it's saying that the Cl minus concentration is not. I need to read the instructions for that part again. Oh, okay, since there's such a large excess of chloride ions, it can be assumed the concentration of the scale minus is still 1.0. Okay, because we, we added that to the sodium chloride. Um, so you're going to end up with a 1.0 molar concentration of the Cl minus there. Okay, so once you find your Ag plus, just plug in a 1.0 for that one, and that would give you your value of your KSP, and then you can compare that to the accepted. Okay. Um, the other post hab calculations, I think I already told you how to do those. Let me make sure there's not something that I missed here. Part 1, write reduction, reduction equations for each metal ion, arranging the equations in decreasing order of measured potential. Okay, so you're basically just making a chart here. Um, 0, 0.00 volts is the potential for the zinc, zinc 2 plus half cell. So you're going to just use all of the equations that you, you had, put them in order, basically. And um, this is where you use the values you got in the lab and then the accepted electrolyte poten or electrode potential using hydrogen, that's going to just come from the chart that I gave you, okay? So then you can subtract those two. Um, and you can see how much of a difference there was between those, see how close you were, okay? Um, part two, write a balanced net ionic equation for the reaction. Yeah, we, we basically talked about how to calculate that one, and then we talked about part three just now. So then the post lab questions, What's well, an electrode potential? You can do that. The ranking of reductions uh, agree with that in the published chart. So then you can talk about that based on your data. How should the values found using the zinc electrode as a standard compare with those in the E0 table that are based off the standard hydrogen electrode? Um, so how should they compare? I think you can probably determine that uh, they should be uh, comparable, okay? In other words, basically, if you're looking at zinc and its difference from hydrogen, it looks like it's negative 0.76 volts, so you would expect everything in this chart to be um, 0.76 volts, um, I guess, higher 
than it is on the hydrogen electrode chart. Okay, and then you can talk about if that did happen or not. What factors can cause the difference between experimental reported? That's just talking about error type stuff. What does a negative value for standard potential indicate? I think you guys can answer that one. How did the change in concentration of the copper ions in part two affect the cell potential? This is change in agreement with that which would be predicted by Le Chatelier's principle to be calculated and measured value values agree. Okay, so again, we kind of have to think about for part two here, this is a good question. This is E equals E0 minus 0 0.0592 over N times the log of Q. Now on that one, it's copper zinc electrodes, so the zinc is going to zinc 2 plus, so the zinc 2 plus is going to be on the top. Copper 2 plus is going to be the reactant that will be on the bottom, okay? Um, so we greatly decreased the amount of Cu2 plus. We really reduced the concentration there from the standard. Um, the zinc 2 plus was, was normal, okay? So what that's going to do, it's going to make this whole expression uh, actually higher than it would be at standard conditions, okay? Because the copper 2 plus, if the, the denominator here is getting smaller, that's going to make the whole term bigger, okay? So if that term is bigger, it's actually going to cause the E, the voltage here, to go down, okay? Because now we're subtracting a, a larger number from the E0, okay? That's what we would predict based on the Chatelier or based on the Nernst equation, okay? And so hopefully your voltage did go down a little bit. I think for most of you it did. And then explain how the AGCL solubility product was determined. Um, well, hopefully I explained that well enough that you could answer that. For your lab, you don't need to do number seven if you didn't get to part three, and you don't need to do the part three calculations, post-lab calculations, if you didn't get to part three. Okay, so you can also forget about that part. Okay, so basically what I'm looking for on this lab is part one and part two completely done, and all the post-lab questions one through six done, but not seven. Okay? All right, hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, we will see you in class.